The chassis on the Land Rover is a very strong design. It was very, very well thought out. It's a ladder frame and not subject to twisting. I'm not going to go about the history of Land Rover frames. You can look that up and you'll understand why they were originally made out of all bits and pieces. Well, what I'm teaching you today, or what I want to show you today, not so much teach you, is some little problems we have with defenders and what to look for and where they go rusty. So let's start with the old favourite, the cross member. Now, whoever put this cross member on did it cheap. They just bought the rear section without the extensions. If you're going to do this, get the ones with the extensions. Pay that little bit more. It is so easy to weld because you weld it up here in this corner and just round where the spring mount is, mount is at the other side. So if you drop the fuel tank off, welding is a dream. This guy did this cheap and well it's hardly welded on at all. So this, the job this morning is to try and tidy all this lot up and make it strong and put some V's in here to tie into this frame. You'll see it when I get along with it. I'll try and explain it. But this is always a weak spot on Land Rovers. Not so much for strength but for corrosion. This, these drain holes here they sort of block up very easily and uh, you've got your bolt going through there for your um, tie downs. Um, once, once those are in and that hole's blocked up then you're going to find that these, these low spots can fill with water and it can't get away. What I do with my chassis is I drill a big one inch hole <laughs> right down here, <laughs> both sides and you can see under there where it's blocked up. Now just a little word about these chassis. When they came from the factory they were dip painted. That means there, were paint, there was paint inside the chassis as well. Now Chassis generally rust from the inside out, um, generally because of condensation. But we can see here already we've got flaking rust, um, so that isn't looking good. I think what we're going to have to do in, is invest very heavily in some light wax based rust proofing to stop any co further corrosion on this because you can sandblast the life out of a Land Rover chassis, but you can't blast inside it. The only way to get all the rust out of the chassis is to dip it in acid like they do before galvanising. But, and let this be a warning, you, the acid in the galvanising plant will not take paint off. So if there's any existing paint still in this frame, the acid will not take that off. The only way you're going to get that off is in a caustic bath. So, work it out. Caustic bath. Um, galvanizing, sandblasting, this all adds up bit by bit by bit. You might as well buy a new frame. So, looking at this frame as we are now, we can see it's, it's mildly rusty. It's not that bad. I mean, I've seen a lot worse. And we're going to send it to blasting. We've decided we're just going to get it sandblasted. And the guy's coming on Monday to give us a price. Um, I think it'll be quite reasonable. We'll take off out of the exhaust and things like that before it goes. Um, but a word of warning about sandblasting is that they will miss little bits and pieces. So don't expect a, an exquisite job that every piece of metal is going to be perfect. There will be little bits that you'll miss. Uh, it's just because they can't get in. So what we've got to do first of all, before we go blasting, this, this is the rem remnants of the bump stops and we've got to take the bolts off there, we'll just chop them off with a grinder. So we've got access to the, to the actual mounting on the chassis, that's very important. So let's move along a bit and see where else they go. Um, this never rusts out, this, well it never, it never really rots out, it, this is okay because it's sort of well protected. but. Um, you know, like I say, these back corners, they're particularly bad. Um, sometimes also, these mounted, it's not to do with the chassis, but while we're under the car, these body supports often go. Alright, they often go. So 
and they're quite neglected they don't really get rust proofed they always get missed but again you can see that there's drain holes in the bottom but um, yeah it's maybe wise to give this a, a shoot with good wax before we put the tank back in so let's have a look a little bit further along the frame and see where else we can find that's problems for some bizarre reason behind the spring at the rear spring in this section here so you can just I'll try and move my light a bit and you can see where the bump stop is it's, it's very difficult to, to actually point it out but behind here is quite a common spot for rusting and this is one thing I'm worried about with this car whether it's going to blast through now let's have a look where else they go this is quite a common piece here to go down between the uh, Yes, that's better. Just before the radius arm joint, round here, it is a kind of a strong point, but they do they do rust out there. These outriggers here are well, they're pretty open, so they don't really get a lot of corrosion. But obviously, um, they are available aftermarket to weld on, so there must be a problem. Uh, this chassis cross member, this body cross member, the seat support. We've mentioned this yesterday. Um, these are replaceable. Uh, YMR do a, a really nice one that have got the bracket. Oh, we can't really see the bracket. Let's hold it up there and see if we can see the bracket. But the bracket is normally welded onto there, which makes this very difficult to replace in situ. But what, you, what they do is that they do a bolt-on bracket so that you can slip this piece in and put a bolt on bracket and that makes it easy because all you've got to do is take the sill off and you can sort of wiggle that out um, whilst we're under here if you meant if you remember what I said yesterday about this uh, the sea post here being rusty well look at the great big hole under there you see and look at the state of that that panel you know something that needs replacing because it's rusty all over the damn, damn place I mean we can get repair sections for it, but it's hauled and it's nasty. Um, let's have a look along this side of the chassis, without blinding myself with this light. Um, yeah, and these aren't too bad actually. Um, this will tidy up, not a great big problem there. Um, but now we start to see what's our problem for today. It's not a big problem, don't get me wrong, it's not a big problem. But, um, as you can see, risking life and limb li lifting it up on the uh, hoist, but fortunately the engine's out, so there's not much weight in this. But you can see that what happened behind the uh, gearbox cross member is all through. Um, my dilemma with this particular project is that uh, we're working to a budget, and the guy was toying on with wanting a galvanised frame and well that was out of budget so this is why this project was on hold for a little while whilst we were deciding what to do so that's what we're going to do today we're going to weld that up now I have a bit of a dilemma whether to cut that rot out or patch over it patching over it would be very very easy uh, I'm going to weld it from here all the way up to here so it's going to be a nice strong patch what my concern is on this side here it doesn't look too bad but the wiring harness runs inside the frame now if anybody's rebuilt a Land Rover chassis or had one of these old ones galvanized you will realize it is not built the, the new ones are not built exactly the same as the originals, the originals if you look, is made out of a pressing. So this piece and this piece are two pieces seam welded together. And there isn't, there's a lot in, inside of here, there's a lot of braces and double pieces of uh, strengthening, especially like behind the engine mountings, that's double thickness behind there. And there's also sort of little zigzags and tubes and all sorts of stuff to give these frames strength that's okay but on the on the uh, replacement chassis that isn't in 
all right so that you, you won't find that inside a replacement chassis because they actually make the chassis out of thicker steel that means that there's no restrictions in the frame when you want to pull the wiring harness in and out however in this instance pulling the harness in and out is going to be a bitch of a job so I'm thinking that seeing this isn't too bad I'm going to grind out all that as much rust as I can and prime it with a weldable primer and again I'm going to start to put a, f a patch from here up to here and that's all I can do and the reason for that is because I'm going to lose my holes here if I cut that out I'm not going to have any holes to work on this is why I didn't really want to do this job but you know they're always bad but anyway let's continue uh, this cross member obviously covered with grease from a leaking uh, transfer case well that's not a problem either so let's have a look a bit further what else can we find well the outriggers somebody's made a nice job of these I must admit they've made a nice job it looks like they've welded a plate at the back, I could be wrong. Let me have a look. I'm running out of wire for me light. That's better. I got all tangled up there for a moment. Uh, no, they, they haven't welded a plate on the inside. But uh, you can see inside where they've, they've cut the outrigger short and just welded it on. That's quite acceptable. But if you notice, the replacement outriggers have a big hole at the bottom. The originals were, were boxed in and they had a little tiny hole at the bottom to let water out and these are quite good so they're going to let the water out uh, what else with chassis very little problems at the front um, apart from these uh, we, well in the old days we used to call them dumb irons because that's where the leaf springs used to attach to I mean that's how old we are that's, that's going back to the 20s and 30s this top box section can rust out as well um, again you can buy all this front section to replace but is this piece has got to be mega strong if you're going to put a winch on it because I've seen these absolutely rotten and, and then people put winches on and pull the front bumper off I'll tell you one thing I forgot to mention that we have a problem here in Canada with and probably in Europe too we get lots of uh, problems with mice and they build nests inside the frames uh, they get through holes like this here where the wiring goes through well not wiring on that side but because it's both sides it's the same but they get in through holes and mice get in and they build nests inside which is very nice and if you remember on uh, one of my videos I had um, nests <laughs> full of I, don't think, I think it was uh, the lining out of the hood lining, the, the bonnet lining and they'd pulled it all inside the uh, frame and made little nests for winter or whatever but that nesting material absorbs water like crazy and that would allow the frame to rust even worse inside but what makes it more interesting is when we come to um, weld it and then they all catch fire so having a f and, and trying to put a fire out inside the frame isn't much fun. So this is what you're sort of looking for on a, on a frame. This can be salvaged, I must admit. But um, if you're doing it yourself, well, that's not too bad. It's no big deal. But if you're paying somebody else to do it and sandblasting and painting, etc., etc., it does get expensive. But, uh, yeah. So there's a frame. Replacing the frame is a big job. It is a big job. If the body's not too bad, and the uh, the framework around here is nice and solid, then you can jack off here and at the back and lift the body off in one big piece. You know, by undoing these bolts, uh, quite easy to do. Uh, just in, undo all the, all the body mountings and then, then the body will lift off but it's quite weak here so I really suggest leave the floor in leave as much in as you can the, the tunnel because everything's going to stop that from folding because you know when you're lifting here and there's nothing in the middle this is the only bit that keeps the front tied to the back so 
there we go so I know this is a bit of a ramble it's not much of a video but uh, at least it gives you an idea what to look for take a hammer and have a look around the frames um, and have a look and see what you can hear but we'll see this frame once it's been sandblasted and painted and it'll look completely different it will it really will look completely different but uh, we don't know how much he's going to charge yet so anyway this is going to make a Land Rover better isn't it but you see hey I'll tell you something before I sign off before you if you're going to take your Land Rover for sandblasting I've got to put in all the flooring all the tunnel the covers and everything I've got to block all those little holes off because when a sandblaster's underneath this car blasting away it'll it'll blow that window out and it'll destroy all the window all the door trims we even had one of the alpine lights break because there was a hole in the floor about like this big and uh, the sand went straight through it and smashed the window so there's more to it than meets the eye so making a Land Rover better yes we can but it's not cheap. Alright, talk to you later.